I'm gonna show you how to crush it in the event space with Cole Hatter, founder of Thrive. So if you're in the event business, in the event space, you're gonna wanna see this. We're getting started right now. Yo, what is up? Zachary Babcock here, former drug addict, spent over five years of my life in prison, turned underdog entrepreneur and the Prove Em Wrong prodigy with a top 200 rated podcast on iTunes. What is up? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you want the best tips on lead generation and customer acquisition, hit the subscribe button right now and tap the bell notifications. That way you don't miss anything. With that being said, if you are in the event space business or if you're looking to get into to the event space business or if you just want to simply know how to crush it in the event space business uh cole hatter founder of thrive is getting ready to drop some bombs uh if you haven't heard of thrive the event thrive yet uh have you been living underneath a rock seriously like uh it is an amazing event uh that's about making money matter about uh, uh there's a mission behind it. it's not just about as cole will get into here and in, in, before i spill the beans let's just get straight into the interview for the underdog entrepreneur that wants to you know, create a platform themselves or, or, you know, get into these events, you know, like what's some of the key mistakes you see, you know, most people just starting out when they go to create like these events and stuff? Uh, for, just in general, even outside the events, the events is a hard space. It's, I own, again, several businesses. It's the hardest business I own, hardest business to manage and run. Uh, events is like for people that like self-torture, basically. <laughs> um, and like I said, uh, I would have never, ever imagined or chosen to get into the event space if I would have known. Not discouraging anyone from getting into it, but uh, you know, we, we meant to do it as a one-off, and now it became a business. But um, uh, one thing I see a lot of entrepreneurs do is they emotionally attach their uh, themselves to the results. And if things go well or if things go poorly, they're they're emotionally attached, and you just can't. You know, you cannot uh, be attached to the outcome. Uh, we as human beings fail more than we succeed. And this isn't that cliche hallmark comment, you know, don't be afraid of failure. That's not what I'm talking about. But like, I don't know if you, you watch baseball. I'm not a huge professional sports fan, but when it comes to baseball, if someone's batting a 300, they're a legend. They are literally going to be in the hall of fame if they have a career average of 300. And what that means is they strike out or maybe not strike out, but they get, they get out seven out of 10 times, whether it's a strikeout or a grand rollout or whatever it is, they don't even make it on the base seven out of 10 times. But the fact that they make it on base three out of 10 times, they're literally a hero. And so using that as an analogy, most entrepreneurs I know have failed more than they've succeeded. I'll remind who's listening now 15 minutes ago. I said, I've probably started 30 businesses, 25 have failed and probably 12 or 13 of them cost me money from a few hundred bucks to tens of thousands. I've lost the worst thing I've ever lost was $170,000 on one idea. So from a few bucks, actually, there's some that didn't cost me money. So from just my time to losing $170,000 on one idea and everything in between, I've done that way more than I've succeeded. But the fact that when I failed, I didn't say, I'm a failure, I'm a loser. The fact that I said, hey, that idea sucked or the marketing behind that idea sucked or that idea was the wrong time or whatever it was. I looked at it for what it was, not as like my identity, like I'm a loser, I mean, I'm a bad entrepreneur. And I think that a lot of people emotionally connect their results or themselves to the results to the outcome. You just can't do that. Uh, you know, if we looked at the bio of all these really successful entrepreneurs, almost all of them have failed more than they succeeded. You know, there's the icons like the Steve Jobs who Apple was bankrupt and he literally got filed, fired from his own company. Like to not only have ran your company into bankruptcy, but then have your board of advisors fire you from your own company. And then obviously he comes back and creates the iPod, iTunes and changed the face of the world forever. Right. So that's one huge example. But again, that would be it. It's a, it's a mouthful, but this is something I'm passionate about, especially for, for the underdogs out there. You know, if you are facing adversity and you do something that doesn't work, step back for a second and evaluate and ask yourself a couple of questions, you know, have the humility of saying, is this a good idea? And if not, as Mr. Wonderful says on shark tank, take it behind the barn, shoot it and move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. I also see a lot of people trying to make a bad idea work. And as they always say, you can't polish a turd. So the first question you got to ask yourself is without pride and knowing that it doesn't reflect on you, was it a good idea or not? And we all have got to have that humility to honestly look ourselves in the mirror and say, bad idea, let's move on. If you really think that the idea has got some legs, then you got to ask yourself, where did it fall apart? And then get back to the drawing board or move on to the next idea. And so what a lot of people do is they have that first failure and then they say, entrepreneurship's not for me business isn't for me. I can't do this. I'm out. And I think that that really costs people a lot of, 
what would have been tremendous success. When you're building this platform and into for the world stuff, like what's what would you say is the most important thing to do when starting out? So uh, a clear message. There are too many events. Why would they come to your event instead of somebody else's? And so if you're trying to build an event, it's got to be around a message bigger than business, bigger than yourself. Uh, I'll use this as an example. I had the opportunity to interview one of our speakers at Thrive. His name is Naveen Jain, multi-billionaire at the height of his uh, – what would you call that stock prices and preferred preferred stock that he owned? He was worth eight billion dollars, right? Mm -hmm. At his peak. And so I'm interviewing that guy in his newest company, and uh his his company is called Viome, and it's all about ending disease. And their slogan is making disease optional because of the technology that they've found and et cetera. And so he's got, you know, these investors that bring money and he's got these PhDs that are running the data and all that stuff. And I said, Naveen, like, let me ask you a question. No offense to you. But your company doesn't necessarily need you anymore. The money's there. The smart doctors that are running it are there. And why does everyone stay? And he had a really profound answer. He said, people don't stay for me. He said, they stay because of the movement. They stay because they truly want to be a part of the people that ended disease on earth. Uh, because, again, without getting into the technology, they really do believe with what they've created over time, they can actually see where disease is created and stop disease or stop what creates disease before it happens, right? To instead of treating illness, prevent it, right? Preventative medicine instead of uh, symptoms, which is all big pharma is all about, right? And so uh, that said, he said the reason no one's going anywhere is because they are part of something bigger than themselves. And so how does that relate to the event space or even our personal businesses or brands? Uh, if it's the Cole Hatter Show, and if I didn't name it Thrive, I named it the Cole Hatter Event, and it's all about flaunting me, which there are a lot of people that do this. I've, I have close friends that run events that are branded all about them. Then when you get there, it's really just them being an expert and them on stage creating value, like teaching things that are, are valuable, but it's framed in the, in the narrative that they're the genius and you're lucky to be around them. That's going to be very transient. People are going to come to that event, say, "Hey, I got my, you know, I got my dose of of Bob or whoever the name of the person is. I'm good," and then they never come back. Whereas the reason that Thrive is working is it's around having a for purpose business to go out there and change the world of consumerism forever. Thrive in its physical form today is a three day business conference, but it's just a platform right now of incubating entrepreneurs to teach them this for purpose business model to go out there and change the world forever. And people buy into that. It's not about Cole. It's not about my wife, Sonia. It's not about, you know, even the word thrive. It's about uh, coming to an event where you are taught and surrounded by a network of other entrepreneurs who are building businesses that are impacting the world and uh, across every vertical service, product, and industry, creating an option for consumers out there to go and buy a pair of Nikes, which I just went jogging. I was wearing Nikes, no offense to Nike, but they can go buy a pair of Nikes where now Nike is making money and their shareholders are happy. Or you can go and buy a pair of Toms, which I mentioned earlier, and now some child in a third world country is getting a pair of shoes because he did so. Consumers are naturally going to gravitate towards wanting to do business with with companies that make an impact. And so that's the vision behind Thrive, and that's why we double in size every single year because it's not that Cole's cool. It's not that my wife's cool, which she is. It's that regardless of us, what people are learning is bigger, and so they keep coming back. Uh, they say that you've got a really, really great event if 20% uh, of people come back. Again, events are very transient by nature, and if someone comes to your event – the next year, they're not going to necessarily want to come back, even if it was a great experience because they're like, oh, I already did that. It's like seeing a movie. Uh, I'm in my movie theater right now because it's the only quiet part of my house. Uh, you know, I've got uh, The Departed right here on the wall or or even over here. You know, we've got uh, Fast and the Furious. What, you know, there's like eight of them now. But why would I go watch the same Fast and Furious in the movie theater four times in a row? I've already seen it. I saw it. It was great. I don't need to go back. I'll buy it on DVD or whatever on Apple TV and I'll watch it in a few years when I forget what happens, right? Events are very much the same spot that if they've come to your event, they feel like they've seen it. Why would they come back? We at Thrive have over a 40 percent uh, retention where if we have a thousand people come last year, over 400 of those same people come back the second year, the very next year. Uh, and that's as far as our metrics go. There may be some that came to Thrive one or two that did not come to Thrive three, but are coming to Thrive four. So that number is probably greater than. So we're doing over double of what the national uh what would you call it? Industry standard is for retention. And I'm getting very specific, but hopefully, you know, your audience can appreciate that. Uh, I think the reason they keep coming back is not because I'm cool. It's because they want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. So how do I tie a bow on that so that your audience can implement this into their own lives? Simple. 
don't just flaunt yourself. Don't just build a business or a brand or an event around who you are to try to further your own narrative or agenda. Create something that people who, if they like you or not, can attach to the work that you're doing and want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And that's how Naveen is changing the world for, for health forever. And that's how we're changing the world of how, how businesses you know, impact the world forever. All right, did you find that helpful? Do you have more clarity on how to crush it in the event space business? Uh, was there any aha moments for you? If so, give this video a thumbs up right now and let me know in the comments below if there was. And if not, hit it with a thumbs down right now. Let me know in the comments below. Tell me it sucked. Tell me there's ways for improvement. I really do appreciate your honest, sincere feedback. That way I can get better at making, I wanna make good YouTube videos for you so that I have people watching my channel. So your feedback really is appreciated. Uh, with that being said, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel and if you want the best tips on how to turbocharge your lead generation and customer acquisition, hit the subscribe button right now, tap the bell notifications, that way you don't miss anything. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you on the next video. And until then, in the meantime, you can check out some of these videos that I'm gonna share with you right now. We put them hours in, to bring them dollars in. It is that underdog empowerment. We put them hours in, to bring them dollars in. My name is Zachary Bell.